Thank you, Bernie, and thank you all the organizers here. Uh, and I am in the Northeast Ohio region, but for some Pan Ohio unity, I love me some chili spaghetti. So I hope I covered all of my regions with that statement. All right, I'm gonna get started. Uh, share my screen here. Uh, I chose a little different angle here with my presentation. I don't really have slides per se, but I have a GitHub repo and I, I put this in the Jupyter Notebook, so you're welcome to run that. Um, it's up on Binder as well, so if you wanna try to build it now, it might take a couple of minutes, but um, you can run it along with me if, if you'd like to. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, what will we talk about today? Uh, why do this? What are the benefits? What are some of the packages? You know, just kind of give you a little bibliography of what's out there and, and why I chose what I chose um, and what you might also see. Uh, and yeah, just some basic analytics techniques that I thought, you know, some people could use in a, a task maybe, you know, how do you write a data frame to an Excel workbook, including some plots in R, you know, using these benefits that we all love R so much, visualizations and ease of analysis and things like that. Um, just a couple of little use cases, like a couple of vignettes almost. Um, that's what we'll talk about. And again, like I mentioned, um, this is all up on, on Binder so you can run it along. And I'll talk about the setup if anybody's interested in how I set all the stuff up in R because I'd never done it before. Uh, I used R in a Jupyter Notebook, but I hadn't set it up to run on Binder so that you can go online and just run it. You don't have to set up all this environment on your own. So that goes uh, some of the things that had been talked about earlier today as well. Um, so the data analytics stack or the data stack, I would call this, uh, I took this Venn diagram off of a, a blog post about data products. And you know, I think one of the most powerful things we can do as data people is start to combine our tools, right? So one of the takeaways I'd, I'd like to have here is that uh, I'm, I'm really not gonna say, you know, Excel bad or good, that kind of a thing, you know, Excel's used and abused a lot, uh, but I think there's a reason and I think it's pretty, it's pretty sticky. It's not going away. So I think it's better to, if you can't beat them, join up, you know, when it comes to the people using Excel, this is a way that, you know, you can join them with your, your powers of R and, you know, anytime that we can combine, combine all these different data tools, you can really get a powerful product. Uh, so there are benefits to each, you know, there's benefits to R, that's why we have things like today. There are benefits to Excel. I love Excel, I won't deny it. So, um, but again, yeah, there are problems with it. Um, so again, this is just one of those ways to make everybody happy. Uh, I'm gonna actually put this in this presenter mode. So I have this presentation thing. I wasn't able to make a slide deck with, uh, I was kind of playing around with these settings with the Jupyter. And if you're familiar with Jupyter Notebooks, there's this ride slideshow that you can make slides with. Um, but to, to get a scroll in there, you ha actually have to go in and manipulate the settings in the package. Um, to allow it to scroll, which I didn't know how to do if I was utilizing a binder image. So that's why I just ended up using the regular Jupyter Notebook. Uh, long story there, but this makes it a little bit easier to look at. So we'll go with this. Uh, so just a little tour of the landscape. You know, this is not a new idea. There are a lot of ways to use R with Excel. Um, a lot of them you need dependencies for, they're kind of clunky. And I have a resource at the end if you're interested in benchmarking these and you know finding what's the fastest for different things. Um, so I've got that covered, uh, but you may see these out in the wild. Um, I'm gonna suggest that you know if you are just looking to read files in, Excel files, uh, read Excel, uh, tidyverse package, good for that. Um, and then we're gonna focus on this open XLSX package, um, which is really kind of like what I said, full service R powered Excel. So if you've ever used something like VBA, right, in Excel, you can kind of automate the production of your workbooks and things like that. I don't think there's really anything that this package couldn't do that, that VBA could um, or vice versa. Uh, so I'll just give you a little taste here and give you some resources uh, if you're interested in learning more. And uh, I think we'll be set for this for this workshop. So uh, how do you tackle this mental model of working with, with Excel? You know, kind of the hierarchy, the, the object model almost in Excel. You know, you've got your workbooks, you've got your worksheets, and then you've got your cells. We're gonna copy that. And we're gonna be able to assign all those to objects in R, which, can't really do. That's one of the biggest problems of working with Excel. Uh, but here in R, you know, we put everything into an object, and then we can, you know, call all of our favorite packages. Like I'll see, um, you'll see some tidyverse functionality here. 
um, you know, we'll create a workbook, add any kind of worksheets, and then here's where you can really go crazy. You know, I'll show you, you could put conditional formatting in a workbook. You could, uh, you know, add a, a table, add calculations, whatever, you know, whatever you need to do. There's so many use cases that, you know, I just gave a little appetizer here, but, you know, anything you need to do, this package could help you out with. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I've got my packages here. I'll, I'll read this in. I've got the mile per gallon data set that I'll get in there. So let's go ahead and do some basic analysis on here. Um, first thing what I'm going to do is just add a workbook, right? So we'll, we'll assign that object and then I can start assigning uh, worksheets to that object. Um, and again, I can name it right there. So, you know, lots of different arguments this can take, but we'll keep it simple. Uh, just go in and add a worksheet. Um, and now let's actually add some, some data to that worksheet, right? So you've probably done this before, same idea. I'll write this to a, to a worksheet in my workbook. And like I said, you know, really whatever you would need to do uh, in Excel, you could do this with this package. So I'll show you how to do conditional formatting here. Um, I'm going to create a formatting style here in uh, R. And again, you know, this goes to the hex codes and all that. Um, I'm going to then apply that style uh, to my table. So uh, this is a little wonky to set this up, but it, it actually works quite well. Uh, you know, I know where my data is, and now what I need to do is find it. So, so this which function is actually going to give you the index position of your names. Um, and this will basically evaluate to whatever column number that is. Um, where name is in that miles per gallon data set. So you can set that up. Um, this is a little wonky too. You have to figure, you know, R, or in Excel, it doesn't really think about a, a header row per se, right? So what you really have to do is, is stagger it by one. So I'm, I'm starting at the second row and then I'm going to the last row plus one. So, uh, you know, kind of staggering it uh, to account for that header row. Um, Excel's not always so precise with uh, the way data works as R is, uh, so we have to make accommodations for that. Um, and then, you know, any kind of conditional formatting you would need, uh, you can go ahead and include that. So I'll just, you know, any of the records that uh, are starting with Ford, I'll go ahead and, and highlight that. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that. Um, I have another worksheet here that I'll add. Uh, we'll put just some basic regression analysis, right? So I'm going to tidy up our regression output just so it looks a little nicer um, in Excel. And uh, we'll get that in a workbook. I will also just visualize those regression results. Nothing too crazy here, but you know, I'll add the regression line fit into our scatter plot and we can actually add an R plot into an Excel workbook because um, I'm not going to lie, Excel's plots are pretty hideous. So uh, we can counter that with this. We can add that right in. And again, you know, I, I told it exactly where I want it to go, how big I want it to be. So we can get pretty granular here and exactly what we want this workbook to look like. Um, okay, cool. So I'm gonna do this and I will save this. And let's go ahead and uh, it's right here. So I can just download this and we can admire our work. Uh, if it loads, great. Not too bad. I love tables in Excel. This has our table. Uh, let's go. Okay, we have our regression outputs. We have a visualize. This is looking pretty good. And again, you know, this is all reproducible, right? So I could do this the next week or whatever. Uh, let's close this to this uh, workbook here. So um, I I'd like to freeze my panes. I'm gonna auto fit the columns. That's kind of a pet peeve of mine in Excel just so I can see everything well. Um, I'm going to format my data, you know, so if people get finicky. I want the weight to be in thousands and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so we can do that. Um, this is one thing I found with this package that is kind of curious is that our connection's still there. Uh, we're going to close that workbook, but I don't really have to uh, like reconnect to it or anything like that. It's the, our connection is still open with these variables that that we've defined. So um, I do have a loop here. I'll use per in a minute. So nobody, nobody freak out too much. It's probably a way that I could use per to, to do this, to freeze all the panes in the workbook. Um, but I'll go ahead and do that. Um, and then again, you know, I'm doing the same kind of thing here where I'm just creating a style um, in the thousands. If you're not familiar, this comes from Excel. This is just the way that Excel formats 
numbers. So um, you can just go into the format menu and figure out, you know, how you want this to look and then just plug that in there. And then again, I'm just going to apply the style right to whatever worksheet uh, column that I want. You know, I'm going to use the which function again here to pull whatever index number that is. And then I'm going to kind of do this wonky row staggering and, and get all that formatted uh, so I can run that. And then um, set column list, that's just going to auto fit. There's a nice auto fit um, argument here. So you really don't have to iterate or do anything crazy. It's just one little function does it for you. Um, okay, so let's just do that again. I'm going to overwrite this. And then this, this little function is pretty cool. It's just going to open that up for me. So I'm not going to have to make a special trip over. Uh, okay, so there's our data. It's looking a lot better. Uh, that's great, you know, just a couple of little added improvements and we're in a better shape now. Okay, um, this is another little trick that I found here and this does use um, per, so let's say we wanted to, you know, write worksheets out to multiple workbooks. Um, what I'm gonna do here is just split this by the origin uh, column and then I'm going to just iterate over this and we are going to write this in, you know, to every um, origin category. Okay, so we'll do that. And now we have all of our uh, different categories. So if you, if you needed to do something like this where, you know, you have to split your data up, just another little example there. There are a lot of them. Um, and I see some questions are coming, so that's great. Um, I've got some recommended resources here. So uh, the vignettes for both of these packages are great. Um, if you're not familiar with this function, this will just give you some, uh, you know, nice little tutorial-like uh, settings like I just did um, in greater detail for different use cases. Um, so that's, that's helpful. Um, this is a meetup deck that I found to be very helpful on Again, this idea of how do you marry R and Excel, and if you are interested, you know, I wasn't able to get into benchmarking and, and comparing all these different packages, um, but this will kind of go into all of that, and they come to similar conclusions about, you know, what packages tend to be best for what, for what use cases. Um, so there's that. Um, and then if you are interested in the, the setup here on, on how I, you know, I'm using Jupyter and um, Binder and all that stuff, um, go ahead and, and do this so you can get anaconda that'll set up your jupyter notebook um this ir kernel package is on cran um you can download that you might have problems with it but you know a web search will probably handle whatever problems you have uh, if you download that that'll put the r kernel on your computer and then you can run r from your jupyter notebook it's okay i mean it's hard to beat our studio really but you know it's something different that's i just figured for this presentation i, I would just try something different with my you know computing environment it's not i don't normally work in jupyter but it was worth a try um and then this uh, binder thing if you go to the repo what binder is going to allow you to do is just create a an image that anybody can access right on the web um, we talked about uh, Microsoft R earlier today, and, and I'm doing something similar here. I'm taking a snapshot from Microsoft R, and that's building into that image. Um, and then you can use a, a file package here um, or a, a script to just download any packages that you would like as part of your image. Uh, one more resource here. Um, this is coming out. It's in progress right now. So if you're interested in the Python equivalent to this, um, how do you power Python uh, to use Excel, then, then this book um, is coming probably next year. Um, if you're on O'Reilly right now, you can get the early uh, release, but just kind of giving you other options. Um, I, I feel like with, I don't know, probably to be honest, you know, Python seems to be taking the lead and um, there, there, there's more and more rumors that it's going to be used as an in-house scripting language inside of Excel, um, which is okay. I mean, I would love it if it were R, just, I think it's a, easier language for what data analysts tend to do. But, um, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, so that's it for me. Uh, I think we have some time. I see quite a few questions, so that's great. And yeah. Let me unmute myself. I was gonna say, George, I really appreciate you including some of those resources at, at the end. Um, and then I believe your link is included in what Esgi put in the chat earlier. If you all follow that, you should be able to get to the notebook that George is showing. Um, we are going to take a look at the top voted question from Alec, who presented earlier today. 
Uh, often, when using Open XLSX, uh, existing pivot tables corrupt the workbook. Uh, any advice uh, getting around that? And I guess I'll just throw in, you know, if somebody has an issue with the Open XLS package, where would you direct them to troubleshoot? Yeah, that's good. Um, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm not too familiar with that particular use case. Um, but in but one I, of your workflows, something breaks, right? Like we all encounter that a cell in your Jupyter notebook breaks and the errors come from open XLSX. Uh, what, what are your go-to resources for that? Right, yeah. I mean, their documentation is is pretty stellar. So yeah, I think a lot of the, the time it's really just like I said, being uh, careful about that um, object hierarchy, you know, kind of the Excel object model and, you know, as much as uh, just the typical programming practices apply, right? Don't repeat yourself. So if you're going to use a file name, you know, define it first so you're not typing it a bunch of times, thinking about, you know, okay, where is this worksheet in relation to this workbook? And, you know, like nothing special related uniquely to open XLSX, but again, you know, unfortunately I'm not uh, familiar with that particular uh, message, but yeah, it does, things things break um, and yeah, the, the typical uh, disclaimers about working with computers apply. Now, Nino is channeling a, a question that I actually had myself. So in the past, I've worked with a package called Officer. Uh, Nino is uh, saying, hey, you know, there's this other R package that, you know, can do some charting with, with Microsoft programs. Um, I guess, why open XLSX? You know, have you heard about Officer? Uh, and, and I guess, like, what drove you to this kind of workflow? Yeah, I, I, I was going for this workflow um, really to have a, a pretty full palette of uh, commands for working with Excel and also being able to, you know, kind of keep my, my programming paradigm in the tidy verse as much as possible. There's probably ways to do that with Officer too. Um, I'm not familiar with that one, but, you know, in this, in this presentation, um, what I was going for is, you know, showing pretty much anything you would need to do in something like VBA you could do uh, in, in this package. And on top of, you know, that's one of the problems with, with something like VBA, you know, there's not really like a package manager, you know, I mean, you're, you're pretty much just copying and uh, pasting code uh, from various places. Not like we do that anyway. Um, but, you know, being able to leverage all these different packages and, you know, some of the popular ones here. Um, so, you know, marrying those two advantages of R. And again, that's another advantage of R is that there is always another way of doing something. So uh, a package like that. And uh, it's good to hear that they're not ugly. I mean, Excel charts are okay, but you know, I'd go with ggplot if I had the choice. So. I love it. And, and I love seeing some of the stuff you're putting together. I know I work with a bunch of people who would love to level up their Excel skills. So this is, this is really awesome, George. Thank you for sharing your time with us. Uh, Please. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to send you some more questions, uh, so either via Twitter or in the chat, I guess, uh, once our session is over, you pick the best way if you want to follow up, but uh, we will shoot these over to you because we've got a couple more. And then, um, John, I believe PJ may be ready to share with us some of his work, so I will pivot to introducing PJ here in just a second.